Hello everybody. Hello my gang of quilting friends. This is Kimberly at the Nook called Journal Breeze. And today I'm going to show you a flip through of a book that I made, a journal, um, using uh, Somerset Studios magazines to a certain extent. Um, I collaged with pieces from their magazine and this is an example of that. I'm going to show you the original so that you appreciate what I am talking about but I had a lot of fun. It's kind of intricate but but really fun to kind of reconfigure. So um, it's this issue that I got the idea in. It's the August, September, October 2020 issue. And Diane Adams is the person who um, got me thinking about using houses. So you can see that this house here is taken out of this house here. And this section here that I cut up is taken out of this section here. And the fence goes with this house. She also has another one that you'll see a little later in the book right here. So I use this top for this house so I didn't use the whole thing I took bits and pieces and then put them together this house is from this one right here it was so fun and then I you know I added my own stuff stickers and stamps and then this archway came from another issue of um, Somerset Studio. It came from February, March, April 2021. And these were from, these three were from uh, a reader's submission. So it's the section called Expressions Reader's Submission in this issue. And on the back of this is Lynn Perel's article. So it was in this section, but I don't have that person's name in front of me. So I cut out some of her arches, but what's really funny is that I cut this out of an ad, a magazine ad, ages ago. I cut out doors all the time. And so she cut out the exact same door. Or I don't know where she got it, but it's the same thing. And then she colored it a little bit. She put a three up there. And um, so I just loved that. I mean, they're pretty iconic, these archways. You know, they're nothing that special. It's what you do around them and above them. So I love what she did, and I just totally changed it up. And you'll see that in the um, book as we go along. And then I also want to give credit to uh, one more person who I used out of this same issue, August, September, October 2020. This person is Linda Tra Treholm, and she wrote a wonderful piece called Mending a Book from the Heart, and she talked about how she was going through some life issues, and she made different pages to work through her grief and to to gain insight. You can see she used pins and fabric and um, made a little stitching over here. And then she used dried flowers over here. And the magazine actually chose this piece to do, you know how they do those large cardstock pieces in each issue? Well, hers was chosen. So I used, I think two of hers were chosen and I love them so much. I would have bought them if they were for sale. Um, but I used the two sheets in a in a journal that I made that was a planner for, I think, 2021. 
Yeah, it had to be. Just gorgeous. Really, really gorgeous. So that's in here too. So when we get to it, Linda Trehom, this this magazine article. So for those of you who, who have access to Somerset, I, I save them and I find that... Um, you know, I, I find that they can be, when I remember to look back at them again, they can be, they can speak to me like they didn't when I first bought them. Sometimes they're way beyond my ability and way beyond my vision. And then when I go back years later, it's like, oh, you know, I know what I can do with this now. So um, I'm really, I'm really happy to have access to them. I don't love every issue. The current one I don't love. But I might love it in a year or two. I loved the last issue. I have some stuff that I'm working on for that that I'm going to share with you. So, um, you know, you just never know. But I try not to be picky or harsh about it. I try to just realize that I'm just not where they are yet. So, with that said, I just used a piece of um, Tim Holtz paper. And then I put, I made a stamp of the new Tim Holtz die. Or stamp, I mean. And then cut it out kind of close to the edges and, and put it on the back. And I, I just, I love it. Because <laughs> this kind of paper isn't really my thing. And I also use the stamp that came with this to fill in this area. So I wanted kind of a plain cover. So I added um, all different little pieces of ephemera around the edges. This was on the original page, so I kind of picked up on this red peachy color, and that's how I came up with using this arch and this arch. So I combined, no, I guess this is all one, and then built the inside. This is a chapter one paper's um, actual way, or maybe I made a bookmark. These are um, stamps that you cut out, and I put words in there. On and then I so I made a copy of my own bookmark. And obviously, this is an embossed cover and a circle and piece of Roxy creations in there. And I put the word transformation on. And then this butterfly is added. So um, I love the warmth, and it has a real fall feeling. I felt. I'm happy with it. It's quite dimensional. Can you see that? It sticks up quite a bit because there's a lot of layers in there. So then we continue with the fall feel. Uh, you know, window that sort of looks a bit like a specimen sample. So I put Tracy's specimen labels on there. Um, might also be uh, Kelly's Crafts. Next piece of fabric. Washi. This is a um, copy of the uh, markings I made. And, um, and the bird I put on. So I have the original, but I didn't want to use them yet. And then this is the back of an envelope. I copy dyed this paper, and then this is the back of an envelope. And these stickers kind of go along with the theme of these dried, aged flowers. And I put them on here as well. It opens up for writing space. Just a little font down here. And then this is a belly band. Um, I think this might be Tim Holtz fabric. And uh, these are photographs that I purchased. And I copied them onto different papers. It's from Alex. Oops, the focus is weird right now. Oopsie. Okay, there we go. Um, I just copied them onto different fabric, uh, different papers to get these looks. And I love how they turned out. That was Alex, you know, Alex from 
Portugal. Uh, she has a very long last name, but it starts with a C. I took her class, Keeping Memories, and that's where I learned that. She's got some great ideas in there. And this picture, same thing. Copied the, my picture onto this scrapbook paper and then backed it. And what's really fascinating about how this one turned out, because I didn't like pay attention, but this is all one photograph. But the way it laid out, it looks like two separate photographs because of the way the color shifted. But I did not do that intentionally. So that was kind of cool. And then this is a picture from um, Ruby and Pearl. And I felt like the pink and the pink played well into this. So this is another. This is the the woman, Linda Treholm. This is her piece, and I put a uh, napkin over it, clear napkin over it to make it more diffuse, and I glued on this flower at the end of these sticks, and then I glued on this um, Tim Holtz Sizzix die cut, and, and I glued this scene on the bottom that came out of, out of another one of the house pictures, I believe. And then I put it all inside of this archway. And then I added this. This is from wallpaper that I have. And I colored it with, uh, I just dressed it. And then these are the fabric. And then I did hand stitching over here. And I put it all on this piece of paper in an arch form that is just regular stationary paper. And then inside, that's a um, chapter one, chapter one. And then this is a quote from Jane Austen. Not knowing when the dawn will come, I open every door. I just love that. The dawn being death. Okay, so there we go. And I coffee dyed or tea dyed, I believe, these pages. And I love that it has like a subtle yellow undertone. I, I know I used curry at one point and so it, I think these are a very light version maybe of the curry and I just think it looks really really good with the yellowy feel from the, these pictures. They just have a very yellow neutral which I love 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 love. And this is one of the envelopes I made in my recent um, envelope bonanza uh, videos on YouTube. Yeah, so I, I found something that was stationary that was a receipt that went across there and then I put this stamp with the um, postmark lines and then I stamped my own round postmark and then I found an address that I thought really went well with the whole thing. So I'm real happy with that and I thought it looked really good with this black and white. Now look at this. This is a Poetical Cookbook by MJM. Oops. Oh, gosh. Come on. I'm going to lock this in. Okay, I'm locking. Now, I love books by MJM. I don't like to cook. I like to bake. But she wraps up the stories of the country she's in or the town she's in, which is often France, by the way. And... Um, and she just is a great writer about food and eating and social gatherings. MJM, she's, you know, passed, so her books are obviously older, but they're they're wonderful, really warm reads. And so she wrote a book that they're saying was a poetical cookbook. That's the name of it. And I just think that sounds fantastic. And so this was taken out of a book that was published, you know, a long time ago. And there it is again. Cook's Own Book, Culinary Encyclopedia, The Cook's Own Book. But, oh, okay, so that's not hers. Hers is this on the other side of that. And then this is from a Fairy Tales and Fables book I have, Rapunzel. Oops. Remember Rapunzel, Rapunzel, Let Down Your Hair? And then this little tag says, Love is the ultimate law of life. 
And I put this on here to give a writing space. And then I wanted this edging to show. And I stenciled this piece of paper, which has a cute little design on it, if you can see that cute little design. And it's the other side of the fairy tale. This is a... I love this so much, and I'm just waiting for the exact place I might want to use it. So I didn't want to glue it down. So I put it under this clip of this envelope, and I made this a flip like that. So it's not holding any particular thing down. And then this is a sample I made with flowers I dried. I put lace on it and some grow grain ribbon and I put gold around the edge of the round window, which is a coin, you know, a coin envelope, coin preserver. And then this is the other side of the envelope. It's from 1951 in Long Beach. Purple stamp made me use it because of this purple archway. And this um, dragonflies in flight. And this is the other side of the grow green ribbon. Some more gold up there. And then I, um, this is swatches that I made with metallic paint. Purple and greens to kind of emulate the stamp in the purple and the purple so this is you know as i explained it to you this is sort of a culmination of cutting apart a lot of different pieces and putting them together in another way and i just felt like this group needed to have a growing fruit fruit tree huh it reminds me of my grandma and grandpa and they grew all their food they not all they weren't farmers but they had a a lot of growing plants and a lot of avocados and figs and oranges and apples and so I felt like this could be them you know saying goodbye to their daughter basically and um, that would be my mom that would be my grandparents and um, and I just felt like that was what needed to be there I love how that turned out and this piled up looks really good And this is the center of the journal. It's not sewed together, it's totally tied. So it's a little floppy. Um, this is a corner of an envelope and I loved it so much that I, I didn't want to toss it out. So I, I ended up ripping it so that it could look like the um, roof line. And I love this Women Vote 19th Amendment Forever. It's a, you know, stamp that's commemorating that but it came out you know a year or two ago and um the queen and then marvin gardens from monopoly and more of the marks the gold and the purple and then this is a little pocket it's from a um greg Ryder magazine 1942 this slips up and offers more writing space. And this is the the um, fabric trim. And on the other side we have the the beach. Now what I really liked about this is that if if I didn't have this in here, you wouldn't know it was a pocket. So I really love how that turned out. When you take that out, you just get the feeling that you're at a beach. I sewed it onto a piece of paper where it says the nature and <clears throat> and it's from a magazine and um, I just love how this looks this is how the beaches look where I live and I just thought this packing tape was a cool addition and this is an old old picture of a beach club uh, 1957 postcard and really, I was torn, like, which side to show, but I chose this one. And it's either, you know, like the East Coast in New Jersey or something, or it's, I think, I think, yeah, we have piers. Ours are on piers, so that's got to be the East Coast. And then this is an old magazine of, picture of Santa Barbara. 
women by their car. And I just thought it was such a cool picture that I put it in the pocket here. The whole thing is full of vintage feel, and I just thought that was ideal, and that too. This is another one of those pictures I did. And um, and then this is a um, paper clip. And these are a couple of receipts from a collection that I bought, 1930 and 1932. I love how beautiful it is with the um, eagle and this quarter and this one too, but being in black, it's a whole different look, and it's a different paper. So, you know, just like now, really nice paper, really beautiful engraving, specialty color ink. Two years later, thin, cheap paper, black ink. <laughs> Times don't change that much, do they? This is a wonderful picture from Ruby and Pearl. Love this picture so much. And the heads are chopped off, which I think is such a hoot. Look at them. Must be Easter because they all have their Easter hats on. So cute. And then this is a um, recent um, watercolor, you know, paint chip idea. But I made the watercolors and cut out a picture. So I'm excited about this, and I did it on a handmade paper. And then this is a Jane Austen quote. She says, I am sorry to tell you that I am getting very extravagant and spending all your money. And what is worse for you, I have been spending yours too. I think I read it wrong. I am sorry to tell you that I am getting very extravagant and spending all my money. And what is worse for you, I have been spending yours too. <laughs> I kind of ruined the joke. Sorry about that. I knew it was coming. So this is a, a seed. And I put it on top of a ticket. And then put this flower on there. And I was kind of emulating this needlework design. I felt like this type of flower was sort of, you know, similar and opening up. And um, this is the other side of that cookbook. This is from the old... Um, Actually, I don't know. I can't say. I, 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 I don't know for sure. It's from something because it's original. And this is a little bag. It's got some ephemera in it. And, um, and then some more of those thistle. I chose the black and white to kind of, you know, draw it all together. And then more of this black and white because this design continued. So there's stamps and another piece. Whoops. This piece came out of the um, needle needlework book. Same one as this. These are stamps. <clears throat> Bought these. This is a piece of um, digital that is preserving this paper. This is the thinnest paper. Love it though. And this was also meant to preserve it, but it's so thin. Put washi on here and it still worries me, but I love it and it's like a great place to um, journal. And then this is from the paper cameo. It's a book cover. Isn't it beautiful? I love this. It's so beautiful. But, oh, and then I copied it onto this page of breakfast beverages. So, principle involved in making tea and coffee. It's like a recipe for making tea and coffee. And then the kinds of tea and the quality of tea. So, I like that. I think that's fun to have around. And then I wanted to kind of draw in this color. But this is actually from a completely different set of digitals. And it's really been around for a long, long time. It's from um, the vintage let's see, uh, Ephemera, vintage ephemera garden from a long, long time ago kit. And uh, and then this 
is a belly band, so it's got two spaces in it. And this is another cutout from the um, same needlepoint book, or needle workbook. And then I stamped on fabric and sewed, you know, not really, they're glued down, but you know, to get that look of hand stitching. And um, then this is just a page that honors nature and I just thought this really was cool. I cut it out of that same uh, old needlework book and this is a tag and I think the Forest Glen is inspirational. I just I think this whole page looks really interesting and fun. And then this is a vintage playing card and I liked her peeking up there. And then this is pretty much almost the last page. I embossed this top and put the butterfly on. And this is a tag and this is a sheet purchased. I think it came in in my Creative Studio box a long time ago. And then this is the last page. Tracy's wallpaper embossed piece for some paper I have and um, postcard. And then I showed you the back. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got some ideas from it. And if you did, please let me know. I enjoyed sharing it with you. Thanks so much for being with me here today. Have a great rest of your day. Take care. Bye-bye.